Next on Life On Air, she's known as the big sis to teen Hollywood. I like to say I was maybe one of the first few people to come out and kind of ask them smarter questions and get to know them a little bit behind the scenes and what they do outside of, of being on set. Now TV host Jill Wilderman joins me to talk about what it takes to succeed in L.A. these days. People recognize hard work over anything. And, and I know we've talked a lot about you don't just have to be a host now. You really do have to have so much more to offer. Jill Wilderman, next on Life on Air. Hey everybody, welcome to Life on Air. This is Tim Tialdo and you have reached the podcast for the TV hosting industry. My job is to connect you with the experts and help you to become the best host you can be. And so for many weeks now we've been talking about hosting and actually being in front of the camera, but one of the things that many hosts need to be concentrating on that they're not is producing. And uh, I brought in a special expert today. She actually is a former classmate of mine. We went to Southern Illinois University at Carverdale together. We had a great time down there. And uh, we actually were both in Hollywood on a, on a Hollywood Studies intern uh, program back, I don't know, I'd say, what was that, Jill, about 12 years ago? I like to keep it around 10, but uh, yeah, somewhere <laughs> forever 10 there. years ago. <laughs> but this lady, she's fantastic. She's considered one of the foremost experts on teens and pop culture in Hollywood. She's an executive producer and correspondent for uh, Fan La La. For those of you who know it, it's one of the most popular teen destinations online. She's been on Yahoo, E! Hollywood Story. She's been on the TV Guide Online. And by the way, she was also a producer for Judge Judy, and she actually earned two daytime Emmy nominations for her work on that show. And then she also teaches a course called Producing for Hosts. And so... I want to welcome the beautiful Jill Wilderman. How are you, Jill? Great. Thank you for the nice <laughs> intro. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So how did you get into kind of teaching producing for hosts? Because you, you've you been a host yourself for quite a while. Yeah, I have. I actually, as you know, started in the producing world. I, well, originally started as a reporter for a Fox affiliate when I was 13. So I had a really wow. wonderful opportunity to, to uh, jump in front of the camera at a young age, but I uh, didn't have the most patient of cameramen, so I learned pretty quickly on that I had to sort of, you know, produce and kind of get my thing, my packages out as quickly as possible. So I did have that, you know, early on experience of doing that, and then of course went to SIU, worked in news and production, and then moved out to Hollywood, and you know, realizing that's not going to be as easy to jump on camera than it would be in in the Midwest to get a a job in news um, as a host. So. I uh, I took a producing job and kind of learned the ins and outs of that, and I'm very thankful for that. So that's kind of how I ended up in, in producing, and then, of course, from there, went on to kind of collide those worlds and, and do both. So that's how I ended up producing and hosting, and then was approached by a wonderful hosting coach named Maureen Brown, who I believe you know and have had on the show, and... Um, they wanted me to, you know, teach a course on on combining those worlds and and you know, teaching people that you you have to be more than just a talking head. Now it's it's a competitive world, as you know, and it's um I I I totally believe in coming as a as a full package rather than just you know an on air personality now. And it's a, I think it's a four week course, and you certainly don't need to go through all the curriculum here. But maybe give us just the the cliff notes on some of the things that you teach people. Well, what's interesting is it started out as a as a, a producing class where you know the first class is kind of learning what various producers producers do, and now of course with online and and TV, you know they're a, a lot different in, in what we what how we produce them. Um, but I did learn that everyone in the class had their own specific goal. So, sort of what I teach in this class because it seems to have you know it seems to be geared more towards. Uh, people that have brands already and have an idea for a show. So it's sort of piecing together and, you know, making compelling content for a specific brand and for a specific um, area of knowledge. Some people, everyone had kind of a a different idea. One girl wanted to do a a show on going green. So I sort of cultivated the class to gear towards each person's uh, person's goal. So it's learning to piece together webisodes really because that's kind of the way tv is going now it's going online sure and, and you know go back in time here you know 2000 you and i are both out there in hollywood I, I worked for access hollywood you would work for some other people and i think at the time at least in our industry if you were beautiful and you had a big personality you had a pretty good shot of getting on a show today that's not the case at all and you know you teaching people how to you know 
open up the box a little bit and, and do some other things to go along with that. I mean, I think it's essential, don't you? It is essential now, especially with the online world. I mean, again, there are a few people who, who get really fortunate, who get really lucky, and they, they land that big job as, you know, the Nancy O'Dell type where they're they're given a script and they're, you know, sort of just <laughs> placed on camera to, to sound good and to look good. But with it, you know, with budgets being cut so much in the past few years and, you know, really the hosting business kind of slowed down a little bit. Thankfully, with online picking that back up, you have to come in and everyone expects you to be able to produce and write and, you know, host your own content now. So it's really important to me to, to get that message out because I hate for someone to come out here and think, you know, it's it's just going to all fall into place without me really having to do the work. You know, there's a, there are a lot of good-looking people out here. And <laughs> that's not to discourage anyone, and it's not necessarily all about that. But I, I have heard a, a lot of people say, you know, I don't ride or I don't produce or I don't do that. Well, I think that's the wrong attitude to have because if you can come into a job with a full as a full package and be able to offer so much more than just be, you know, be able to read prompter and, and talk on camera, I mean, that's – everyone's ultimate goal. That's the easiest way to do it, but those jobs are a little more few and far between. So I think it's important for people to to have that that knowledge and, and be backed up by that. And, and you feel better about, about your work when you do that. You also have creative control over what you're doing, which is really exciting for, for most people. Sure, and I, I, I just want to back up what you said because that is so true, that if you go out there and you say, I don't write or I don't produce, I, I don't know how to work a camera, I don't know how to do any of that, Honestly, today, good luck. That's really all I can say, and I'm sure, Jill, you can probably back that up as well. But um, I want to talk a little bit about your career because you have carved out quite a niche. You've kind of become known as the uh, the big sis of teen Hollywood. You interview all the big ones from you know Justin Bieber and Demi Lovato and all these different ones that are making big names for themselves in their teens. And um, it's not something that most people normally look at as saying, I want to go do a teen show. They're, they're more about the reality show. So how did you kind of carve out that niche and make a name for yourself? It's interesting how it all came about. I used to work for an entertainment website, which I was a supervising producer of and also uh, the main host. And I found that through everyone that I was covering, and I'd interview anyone from George Lucas to Dustin Hoffman, you know, on one day and then Miley Cyrus the next day. But when I was interviewing, you know, people like Miley Cyrus at the time, it the feedback was so huge. And I also just so happened to have a sister who was around that age and who would, I think this was around the MySpace days, <laughs> not to date myself, <laughs> but she would you know, hear that I had interviewed someone on Disney and Nickelodeon and absolutely freak out. And then she would tell her friends and then I would notice they would all post on MySpace and they would post my links and they would, it, it would spread like wildfire. So I, you know, thought to myself, this has got, there has to be something to do just specifically. Why is there not an access Hollywood for teens? It's such a huge market. It's, you know, at the time was somewhat of a, more of an untapped market as far as someone producing good looking content, you know, that access Hollywood, you know, flashy content. And, and my thing was always treating the kids like, you know, they were Tom Cruise because they really, they had that, they almost had that status. They almost had that following. And so I think I was, I like to say I was maybe one of the first few people to come out and, and ask them about, you know, kind of ask them smarter questions and, and, you know, get to know them a little bit behind the scenes and what they do, um, you know, outside of, of being on set. And they were so excited because most people treat them like kids. And they're like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite ice cream? And, you know, I know a lot of the teen mags were kind of doing that at the time. So for me, it was just about seeing how th the impact that that market had on, on teens and kind of finding a an outlet for that. So who's the teen today? I mean, there, there's a lot of them out there. Who's the one that's just really rocking it? There are a few. There's a guy named Cody Simpson. I think he's being managed by Justin Bieber's team right now uh big time rush is still really big of course one direction right now is is taking over um it's a, a boy band that started on the x factor i've seen so many of them grow <laughs> into you know young adults of course like i interviewed miley cyrus back in the day she's you know she was on a disney show and now she's engaged and, and now seeing demi lovato on x factor kind of giving all these kids advice it's interesting to see how quickly it evolves um, but yeah, they're still, they're still cranking out those teen stars. <laughs> they're 
it's not really a definitely not a dying business that's for sure well your background comes from you know obviously covering these teens you, you're a host on one end and then you've been a producer and you know you were nominated for two daytime emmys with judge judy now that's a show that's a little bit different it's not exactly uh entertainment as we see it it is entertainment for people but just not the way uh, we normally see it in the host industry how did you how did you get into the judge judy gig um i actually got that through my i interned at e as well as another production company and and i know through the internship we had a class every week that we had to go to we had different guest speakers and i just went up to one of the guest speakers afterwards and i said you know i know you talked about working on the jerry lewis telethon that's a show i've worked on since i was a kid you know how can i how can I meet the producers out here to work on that show? And so she helped me pr- not only get on that show and work on, on the Jerry Lewis telethon for a few years, but she also, her husband just so happened to be a production manager for Judge Judy. So I came in as a PA and worked my, my way up. I wasn't just handed a producer job right away, but it ended up being such a great experience. Even though it was such a different tone, it's still, it's all about work ethic out here. And I think no matter what you're doing, you have to do it, with all your might and all your, your hard work, because if not, there's so many people waiting to take your job. And um, so I think that was the biggest thing for me to learn from that show is it took a lot of hard work. It's the number one show. It's been the number one show for years. And um, the executive producer was, was not easy on us. (laughs) So, um, so I kind of, I kind of just fell into that, so to speak, but even though it wasn't entertainment news, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I still feel very, you know, grateful that I actually gained that, that experience of, um, you know, producing that kind of, that kind of show. Cause it took a lot of hard work and it takes hard work to be out here, period. There's just no, and ifs or buts about it. And I, I find, uh, I find it fascinating that you've transitioned a little bit into another, uh, niche that Hollywood seems to kind of avoid, but yet it's very, very popular and that's country music. Talk about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, before I, you know, become, from the big sis of Teen Hollywood to the grandma of Teen Hollywood, I figured I should probably get into another market. Uh, no, I'm not that old. But um, if uh, I, I first wanted to to transition to something new, I, I always keep myself on my toes for sure. And I felt like country music was another somewhat of an untapped market in L.A. And there are a lot of fans out here, but no one's really covering it like they should. We have a couple of radio stations. So, again... I don't know what I'm thinking, Tim, but I said, I'm going to start another website. <laughs> so I started uh, SpotlightCountry.com, and, and I'm having a blast with it and really getting to know the artists. And, and it's it's a different tone, of course, interviewing and producing around people that, you know, I went from teens to, to country musicians who tend to have a beer in hand when you interview them. So it's a little <laughs> bit of a different <laughs> tone. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really fun. I really like the people. I'm a Midwest girl, so... I kind of fit in with that that group, and I'm spending a lot of time in, in Nashville, so I'm back and forth between L.A. and Nashville, which is really exciting for me. I like the, to change it up a little bit. and So, yeah, SpotlightCountry.com. Thanks for bringing that up. You're welcome. I'm pretty proud of that. i got to be honest with you. I think you're really onto something because anytime somebody goes the opposite way of the, the rest of the 95% are going, I think they're always the ones that come out and end up, you know, becoming the expert in whatever they're doing. And I see you doing that both with teen and country. And uh, I really think that uh, you're you're on the verge of, of hitting it really big. So I'm excited to, to see that Thank happen you. for you. Now, Thank you. in this business, there are a lot of different ways to get into it. Now, you and I both went out to Hollywood right out of college. We literally packed our trucks and, and headed out there immediately after graduation. <laughs> Actually, yes, it was I even packed be- my truck. Yeah, it was even before <laughs> graduation. I think we finished our credits out there. Now, you stayed out there and you've made a, a, a name for yourself and you're doing doing some hosting out there. I left. I went the news route and did the markets and then worked into hosting. So there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. But if somebody is wanting to move to L.A. specifically, and there are a lot of people that they think I have to be in L.A., when they get out there, what do they need to start doing? What are maybe just a couple of tips of things that they need to kind of concentrate on when they're thinking about doing that? You know, it is true what they say. Of course, in L.A., it's all about who you know. And, and I think you always have to be on your toes as far as who you're meeting. And, and that was something I quickly recognized is that everyone that you meet, you know, could help you towards your next job. It's all about telling people what you want to do. And I think that's the hugest thing. I got a little overwhelmed and intimidated when I moved out here. I knew what I wanted to do, but I was a little timid in telling people because very often people will say, 
good luck with that because everyone else out here wants to do the same. And I, I think I let that get to me a little bit more than I should now that I've gotten older and I've matured more. I get now that people, you can't listen to that stuff. You can't listen to someone tell you you can't do what you want to do. If you work hard and you, you put it out there, you know, you can do whatever. But my, my biggest thing is, is about, you know, meeting people. If I hadn't met Janet, Carol Norton, I wouldn't have gotten my job with Judge Judy and, you know, gotten my job on the telethon. And it was a simple conversation that I struck up. Um, so I think, you know, obviously also being prepared to, to do anything. You may have to take a PA job. And, you know, I had to load coolers. I had to shop at Costco for Judge Judy. I had to clean her doilies. I was taking <laughs> to the dry cleaner. Like, <laughs> do what it takes because people recognize that hard work. And, you know, now I have a really good report with the producers there who helped me move on to, to different jobs and hosting jobs because they saw that, you know, I wasn't, I didn't come into every situation like, well, I'm a host and I don't write or I don't produce or I don't work hard. I wanted to show everyone that I, I can offer more and I work hard and people recognize hard work over anything. And, and I know we've talked a lot about you don't just have to be a host now. You really do have to have so much more to offer. And for those of you listening, I, I want you to take a huge lesson from what Jill is saying here. There are going to be a lot of people out there that come across and they say, good luck with that, just like you said, or, you know, there's a ton of people trying to do that. And immediately you think in your mind, well, if everybody else is trying to do it, why should I try to do it? Well, the fact is, if you start to do it and end up doing the work and you're persistent and consistent about your work ethic every day, you will emerge on top. And Jill's doing that right now. And I Jill, I'm just so proud of you, and I, I can't thank you so thank much for you. being here and, and spending the time and sharing your knowledge with us. Of course, and may I just say the one thing is when people say that, it definitely doesn't help your, your ego, but it did help me think outside the box, and I'm big on thinking outside the box. And Well, how can I make myself different? How can I stand apart from the other million girls who want to do this? You know, there are a lot of girls that want to be actresses, so, and I feel bad because people do the same thing to actresses. They're like, oh, everyone wants to do that. People did that with me when I said, I'd really like to host a show or be a reporter. It was totally attainable. It took me a little longer to, to realize it, but you can do whatever you put, put your mind to. It sounds cliche, but it's, it's super true. Well, folks, that's Jill Wilderman. Hey, Jill, thanks so much for being here. And by the way, if you want to learn more about Jill, go to her website. It's jillwilderman.com. You're going to learn all about her past and what she's been doing and what she continues to do today. And I think you're going to learn a lot from her. So, Jill, once again, thank you so much. And, folks, remember what I always say. If you want to predict your future, you have to go out and create it. Now go do it. We'll see you next week.